under my body and bring it into subjection. Lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. That's good. Lord, you said where two or three are gathered in your name, you're in the midst of us. And Lord, we don't need a building. We don't need uh, all the glamour and glitz. We just need you, Lord. Have you ever been in a situation where you felt like you were about to get in a fight? You felt like Man, you know what? Something's not right right now. My hair's starting to stand up, and uh, it, we're about to throw down. You ever been in that situation where it just didn't feel right, and you could see that people were moving in the position, or, or there was, you could tell that there was confrontation about to happen, or maybe you have been, um, you have been in a volatile situation even here, where uh, you knew there was enemy around, and you felt like, man, we're about to get in a firefight. This is about to get real. And if you haven't experienced the horrors of war, well, maybe you've experienced it here where you felt like, uh, man, I'm in a fight. The bullets start flying like we hear, and then your heart starts pumping. Before you know it, you're acting or you're responding based upon your what? Based upon your training or what you know to do. Your instincts, and, and many times you don't even think about it. You're either shooting back or you're, uh, you're running to the fight or running away from the fight. And it's not till later then you think about your actions and sometimes it's even hard to recount what was going on. I remember one time I, as a police officer, I got to a scene and this woman had overdosed and I was trying to get her to respond and save her life and ended up, uh, she ended up living but I don't remember any of it. It's like almost like I blacked out in the moment as I was trying to, to save this woman's life. And my partner later on told me all the things that I had done to save her life in the words that I had said. And I was like, I don't remember any of that. Well, and we see in this chapter of second, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter number 9 that Paul, he said we're in a fight. Paul is the apostle. He wrote uh, 13 books of the New Testament. He is, he is chosen by Christ for us, for our admonition. And he gives us some verses to uh, think about. He said, Know ye not that they which run in a race, run all, but one receives the prize. He said, do you realize that if you're in a race, you give it everything you have, but there's only one trophy to first place. The second place is like a first place loser, right? Because I told him once. <laughs> now I've ran a few races. I've run, I know I don't look like I run now, but I've ran uh, probably 10 5Ks and a couple 10Ks, and I ran one marathon in my life, and I, I didn't win uh, by any means. I didn't receive a prize. I paid the it for the entry fee and got a teacher. <laughs> wow. But if you run a race, only one gets the prize. But Paul the Apostle said, if you're competing, every single person out there is giving it their all. Nobody's out there just halfway running the race because this is like, this is the time that he writes this when Greece was in Greece and Rome. They were huge with uh, Olympic racing and uh, foot running and all those kinds. So he equates it to that. He equates it to, to fighting. He said, he tells us to run that you may obtain the award, the prize. He says, because we're in a race. If you're in a race, whether you want to admit it or not, and the race is called the race of life. It's from the moment you're born to the moment you die, the clock is ticking. So my question is about this race. Are you in it to win it, this race of life? And what is the prize? What are, what are we going for? What is our goal in life? You know, what's our purpose? Are we a contender or are we a pretender? So we, what, what is your goal in life? What's, your, what's my goal in life? I think sometimes we, we, we don't realize, number one, that we're in a race. And number two, we, I think our, our goals may be skewed for what we think is important in life. Because honestly, when we're on our deathbed, and we're laying, up, laying in the hospital, sucking oxygen from a tube. It's not gonna matter how much money's in my bank account right now, or what kind of car I drove, or what kind of truck I had, or how big my rims were, you know, those kind of things. What's really gonna matter in life is the people to our left and right and the influences we made along the way. Now, every race, every fight has rules. Even the UFC has rules. There used to be a time in the UFC when there was no gloves. Remember that time? There used to be a time, now they have padded gloves, and it's still, man, that thing still hurt. But um, 
you know, even the UFC has rules. What were some of the rules in the UFC? Abortion, not below the belt. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, no grabbing, no punches down here. What else are some rules? In the, no eye gouging. Yeah, no thumbs in the eyes, no, you know, no fish hooks, any of that stuff that I love. Uh, so there are, there are some rules to it. Think about boxing. Are there rules to boxing? Like you said, no hitting below the belt, no biting people's ears off, <laughs> no, no wrapping up for extended periods of time. There are rules to that. And if you break the rules, then you get disqualified. Well, in life, there's some rules. In this road, in this race of life, there are definitely some rules. And if we do not abide by those rules or we don't do it the way that God prescribed, then we don't get the price. That's really what it comes down to. It's like, what are the rules? You know, some people think that when I stand before God, he's going to weigh the good with the bad. You ever heard that? Well, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty good person, so God's going to weigh the good with the bad, and hopefully I've done enough good to get me in. But that's nowhere in Scripture. Sounds good. Makes us feel good for some people. And other people say, no, I'm, I'm definitely going to hell. You ever heard somebody say, oh, I'm going to hell? In fact, there's songs, Highway to Hell and others. But it's so much more than that. The rules are simply about accepting the Lord into our life and being forgiven. So in the race of life, we have one fight, we have one chance, we have one shot to make a difference in our lives and the lives of others. There's only one. There's no do-overs, there's no down-overs, there's no rewinds. You can't go back and replay the tape from 20 years ago. Matter of fact, when you hurt somebody or the words you said, you can't go back and, and redo that. Have you ever done that? You said, like, wish that, man, I wish I wouldn't have said that, or I wish I wouldn't have done that, or I wish I, look at this mess that's created. If I could only go back, and some people spend their whole life thinking about the past, that they're no good for the present and the future. You can't go back, there's no do-overs. You can't get that time back. You can't get those words back. So one chance. The, fly, the fight is against the clock. How many of you played basketball in high school? Or you played, uh, you know, football. There's, there's a clock that's, that's ticking. And when the timer, when the time's up and the clock buzzes, it's over. Now, if you got that last shot at the buzzer, you better hope that it's released before the red light comes on and the, and the buzzer goes off because it is over. There's no do-overs like we talked about. And we don't know when that buzz is going to sound. We don't know when our clock is going to be done in life. But one thing's for sure, when it's done, it's over. We don't get a second chance. That's why it's important to live each day and each moment as if it's our last. I remember a Fort Drum back in 2012. We had come back from deployment. And as we came back as 1st Battalion, uh, first brigade second brigade took our spots we continued to rotate and as we were there uh, I was on funeral detail and death notification and that week there was a IED that hit one of our vehicles over in Afghanistan and it killed four of our soldiers in the same vehicle and so I was tasked to deliver the death notifications me and uh, another chaplain at the same time well two of the spouses during the deployment had went back to their home states to uh, you know, be with their family, around their family while, while their husbands were deployed for a year. But two of them were still at Fort Drum. And so him and I, we uh, had delivered the death notifications and they were two streets over from each other. So as we pulled up in a black suburban and got out in uniform, there were ladies pushing strollers down the street. Some were in the gardens, you know, there was, it was like a scene out of a movie. And to where they saw us step out and at that moment, everyone knew what was about to go down. We had to knock on the door and deliver that death notification. And as soon as they saw us, they wondered, are we next? Are we the next? Am I the next wife to get notified? Am I the next family? As the word is now circulating through the neighborhood that people are dead, our husbands are dead. And so it was very tough and difficult. But when we delivered a notification to that lady and we got inside the house, I asked her, ma'am, is there somebody we can call to be with you during this time to be a comfort? She said, my, my husband's sister, my sister-in-law, she's staying with us right now, but she's down the street. She's at a neighbor's house because she had been living there for about three months and had made friends. So, uh, so she picked up the phone and called her and she said, you got to come home right now. So we heard this woman screaming all the way down the road as she was running down the sidewalk, a big woman. And she was like, no, no, and calling out her brother's name who uh, had just been killed. 
the night prior. She collapsed in the middle of the street. All the other ladies came around her and they were all crying and hugging and it was just a very dramatic uh, and emotional scene. And as she calmed down and I got to talk to her, she was so very upset because the last thing she said to her brother on the phone just hours before his death was, I hate you, and hung up the phone. Because they'd been arguing about something stupid, paying a bill or living in the house or whatever it might be. Something stupid. And what was even worse than that, guys, was that she said the last thing she said to her father was something to the same effect. They were in an argument and she slammed the phone down and then he was killed in a car accident. Just craziness. And I felt bad for her because she harbored all this bitterness and hatred and, and emotional anger at herself. You can never go back and you can never reverse and, and get that time back, get those words back. Does that make sense? So I'm saying that the connecting with the Lord and connecting with each other is the most important part in life because we got one chance. And Proverbs 27 1 says, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for you know not what a day may bring forth. And, and it's important that we recognize that life isn't just about what we can get, but it's about what we can give. And the greatest thing that we can get, number one, is the gift of God, which is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's what the scriptures say. And then the second greatest gift is to give that gift to others, to share our love with others, because time is short. And I don't know if you had phone conversations last night. I know a lot of our guys are arguing and fighting with the wives long distance. And I understand tensions get high and sometimes they're heated. But man, the very last thing you want is for somebody to check out of this life because their race is done. And, um, and you have not to said the, you know, the right things or to pick up the phone and call that person, that, that father, that mother, that loved one and say, hey, you know, let's not fight. I'm sorry. I love you. We got one chance in life to be a real contender and not just a pretender, to really be focused and not just to, um, you know, just live however we want and not think about the consequences. So our purpose in life has got to be more than just sucking air and consuming products. It really does. Because we're consumers. It's got to be more. It's to have a relationship with God. It's to... Um, develop that and so it's not about the religion you hear today but it's not about the religion it's not a relationship and when you leave this little area today I hope that is deeper with the Lord it's a connection with God just because of the presence that we have here and then it's to serve ultimately serve the Lord and uh, have him in our lives there's only one life so soon will pass only what's done for Christ will last only one life so soon will pass only what's done for Christ will last. Paul later, he says that our life is like a vapor. It's like steam coming off a pot. It appears for just a few seconds, a little time, and then it vanishes the way. In the scope of eternity, our life of 70 years, 80, maybe, is short. In the scope of eternity. Paul says here, Every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. He said, now they do it. And he moves to the physical. He said, they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. In other words, you know, they do it for a prize. He says, but we as believers in Christ, we do it for an incorruptible prize, uh, an award that fades not away. It's not made with hands. Our, our rewards are in heaven for the people we influence for God. He said, I, therefore, I run. He said, not with uncertainty. He said, I'm just not here just to making it up as I go along through life. He says, so fight I, in verse number 26, he said, I fight not as one that beateth the air. He said, I'm not up there swinging and hitting air. He said, I'm not shadow boxing. He said, I'm giving it everything I have in life. And it's not the physical, it's the spiritual that's, that's impacting me. And he said in verse 27, but I keep under my body, bring it into subjection, that by any means, when I should have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. And this speaks to me. Paul said, he said, I'm human. He said, I've got, you know, I've got uh, distractions and, and there's temptations. He said, but I have to tell, I have to keep my body under subjection. I, there's some things I got to tell it no, because I cannot preach this, preach this message and be a hypocrite. He said, I can't preach this to others and yet throw my life away. I can't win the world for Jesus and lose my own soul or lose my own family. Does that make sense? Yeah. So he closes that up. He starts with the fighting. And he ends with the, the same ideology about fighting, but it's a spiritual fight. 
and he said there's one prize. In John 14, 1, it says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Jesus said, In my Father's house are many mansions. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. The Lord Jesus Christ is the prize. He is the way, the truth, and, and the life. I remember um, in 2005 was the last time I was here at Fort Knox. So it's been 12 years. And that's when I, I graduated from drill sergeant school here uh, as an E7. And one of my favorite and my favorite cadences was about being a drill sergeant. And there was a there was a tune in it and it says, My way or the highway. My way or the highway. Remember that one? My way or the highway. We sing, your way's the wrong way, my way's the right way. So we, we would incorporate into the soldiers that you gotta do it the drill sergeant's way. Anything else is pretty jacked up. But can I tell you it's not my way? Honestly, if I if I live my life by that rule then I would be sorely disappointed when my clock is up and the bell rings. Because I didn't care about it, my way. And that's the problem so often, we live by our set of rules instead of living for God. So I wanna encourage you, number one, have a relationship with Him. Invite Him into your life and have that every day. So when you wake up in the morning like I did this morning, you can thank Him for the day, and thank Him for the impact He's made on your life. And number two, make an influence on others positive influence on others today. Find one person that you can compliment and make a positive impact. Because we are running a race and there's one prize at the end and we wanna, we wanna do it right. So in closing, are you a contender or a pretender? Or maybe, maybe you just never thought about it before. Maybe you just never thought about what your purpose in life is. Man's greatest questions are, where did I come from? What's my purpose in life? And where am I going? And most people will never find a solution to that because they never find true hope in the Lord. I wanna give you that hope and I wanna encourage you to uh, be reminded that don't, don't just be a contender. Don't just be a pretender, but run your race in life with all you got, realizing that the most important things are the people to your left and right in your relationship. Lord. God, help us to realize that you are what's important. As we get distracted and sidetracked with work and with bills and with stressors, Lord, help us to be mindful that there's more important things in life that we need to pay attention to. God, we are physical, we are mental, we are spiritual for this moment. Help us to focus on the spiritual and make an impact in other people's lives, I pray. Amen. Lord Jesus, the same night before he was uh, betrayed and crucified, he took bread in the upper room and he broke that and gave it to his apostles. And he said, this is my body which is broken for you, this do ye in remembrance of me. He said, this is my blood which is shed for you. As often as you drink it, remember me. Remember my body that was broken, remember the blood that I shed, because through it, you have forgiveness of sins and you have redemption. And Colossians 1 it says, and whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. Take heat, for this is my body which is broken for you. Thank you, Lord. After that, he took the cup. When he had taken the drink, he gave to his apostles and said, This is the blood which is shed for you. This do ye and remember to me. Lord, thank you for your body was broken and crucified on the cross of Calvary. Thank you for your blood that was shed. Lord, I pray that you would make an impact in our lives, help us to be aware, realizing that life is short, but eternity is forever. Lord, I put my faith and trust in you when I was 16 years old. Help me never forget that. I pray for others that would do the same. In Jesus' name. Guys, thanks for coming out today and being part of the service.
enjoyed having you. And I'm glad I can make it here to Fort Knox to be with you. If anybody wants to you know, ever talk or sit down, we can do that too. God bless you. Make an influence on other people today. Positive influence. God bless. Place. <laughs> <laughs> uh, back in my